Do you have hardwood floors that need to be brought back to life? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I saved over $4,000 by redoing my hardwood floors by myself. So the house that my wife and I bought was built in 1952, and when the carpets were removed, there was, of course, awesome hardwood floors underneath. Back in the day, they used to cover hardwood with carpet a lot. Nobody today understands why, but that's just how it was done back then. So we needed to refinish them because obviously they're covered in carpet glue and staples and pet stains and everything else. So they just need to be completely redone. So there was a quote that we got to have them refinished and it was gonna be over $5,000 to have someone else come in and redo the floors. Obviously that would take a big chunk out of our budget for renovations. And so I started doing like you're doing now, looking up how to do it and uh, actually had a friend that owns a flooring company give me some pointers as well. But now I'm gonna give you step by step on how to do it. I will tell you on the front end, this this is a DIY project. You can do it yourself, but it is not easy at all. It is a fairly simple process, but it is work. I'll tell you right now, there's a reason why those companies charge as much as they do. It is worth it. Um, but if you're wanting to save money and a big chunk of money like myself, there is a way for you to do it yourself. Now, one of the most important steps is choosing what kind of sander you're going to use. We use what's called a drum sander, and drum sanders are the, it's the most heavy duty floor sander that you can get. But the catch with that is a drum sander has the most probability that you will mess up your floors if you're not careful. So if you're gonna use a drum sander, you have to really pay attention to what you're doing so you don't severely damage your floors. Now, if your floors don't need as much heavy duty work as far as getting the floors back flat again, then maybe you can look at something that's called a square buff. And that's a more beginner friendly sander, so you're a lot less likely to ruin your floors, but it's not as powerful as the drum sander. So decide what's best for you and, and go with that. So I'm gonna start by going ahead and showing you the before and after so you can see what we were dealing with and then what the finished product is supposed to look like. Now here's the before and you can see the carpet glue that's on there. Here's kind of a during picture. And then here's what the final product looked like at the end. And I ended up spending less than a thousand dollars redoing this all myself. Now, if you like the information I'm giving you so far, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel. So that way I can continue to put out more videos like this. Now the age of your floors is gonna determine which grit you start with. My floors were older, like I said, this, the house was built in 1952, so they're 70 years old. So I needed to go more aggressive, and so I started with a 36 grit. You can see here that I'm going at a diagonal instead of straight along the planks. The reason for this is over time, the wood will start to bow and create sort of a U shape with each plank. So going at a diagonal helps level the floor better than if you were to go straight along each board. Now, one thing you never do is go against the grain, and that means more at an intersection with each plank. You always wanna go parallel or at a diagonal. Now you can see those dark spots left behind where I've already been. That's, like I said, that U-shape where the floor is lower in some spots than others. So as you continue to sand it, you'll flatten the floor out and be able to get those lower spots. Now the worst part is edging. You gotta edge between each pass. So when I do 36 grit, I have to go around the edge with 36, and then 60 and 60, and so on and so on. Now we move up to 60 grit on the drum sander. I'm going the opposite diagonal as before so I can get the scratches out of the floor. And then I didn't record it, but obviously I went with the edger around with the 60 grit after this. Now that we've got the floor relatively flat, we can move on to the 80 grit and go at a parallel with the wood planks. This will be the final pass before we move on to a different type of sander. And don't forget to do the edge with the 80 grit too. That'll be your last pass with the edger. And trust me, you will be thankful you're done with that part. 
Now you're gonna switch to what's called a finish sander. It's gonna be 100 grit. This is to blend everything between the edges and the middle of the floor and just get a uniform sanding across the whole thing before you apply your finish. Now you're done sanding, but there's gonna be dust everywhere. So you need to thoroughly sweep and vacuum the floor before we can put any kind of finish on the floor. Another thing that you need to do before you put the finish on the floor is to make sure your heat and air unit is still turned off. The reason why is because while that finish is still wet, your air unit could, can throw dust and hair and other things into the finish and mess up the finish. Now once you got everything cleaned up, you can put your finish and your stain on the floors. We decided to go with a clear finish because we wanted the floors to stay light like this and not turn back to that orangey color. We also went with a matte finish so that way it didn't shine. So I'm using a foam brush to do the corners and a 3 16th inch nap to do the main areas. And you can see that I'm only doing one or two feet at a time because this stuff is water based so it dries really fast. So if you try to go back over it, it's going to mess it up. So make sure you do small portions at a time. Now with this being the first coat, the wood is really gonna absorb this finish. So you'll see when I'm done with this first room that it's gonna look really splotchy and just not look good, but just let it dry, trust the process. Now since this finish is water-based, it's only gonna take two or three hours to dry. And if you take your hand over it after it's dry, that, that wood will feel rough again, even though it felt smooth before you started. That's because with that first coat, the wood fibers tend to swell so it'll feel rough again. So what you need to do is take that finish sander and put a buffing pad on it and ba essentially buff the surface to lightly scratch it and knock off those fibers and make it smooth again. And then after you buffed it, you'll then vacuum everything up and put your second coat on and then possibly a third. So this is what it looked like after the first coat compared to the second coat. And that's it. Like I said, it's not easy by any means, but it is definitely doable and you can save yourself a lot of money doing it. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you can get updates on when I post more videos like this.